Chapter Six, Jacob, Part Twelve of the Legends of the Jews, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Legends of the Jews, Volume One by Rabbi Louis Ginsberg. The Outrage at Shechem. While Jacob and his sons were sitting in the house of learning, occupied with the study of the Torah, Dinah went abroad to see the dancing and singing women, whom Shechem had hired to dance and play in the streets in order to entice her forth. Had she remained at home, nothing would have happened to her. But she was a woman, and all women liked to show themselves in the street. When Shechem caught sight of her, he seized her by main force, young though she was, and violated her in beastly fashion. This misfortune befell Jacob as a punishment for his excessive self-confidence. In his negotiations with Laban, he had used the expression, My righteousness shall answer for me hereafter. Besides, on his return to Palestine, when he was preparing to meet his brother, he concealed his daughter Dina in a chest, lest Esau desire to have her for wife, and he be obliged to give her to him. God spoke to him, saying, Herein hast thou acted unkindly toward thy brother, and therefore Dina will have to marry Job, one that is neither circumcised nor a proselyte. Thou didst refuse to give her to one that is circumcised, and one that is uncircumcised will take her. Thou didst refuse to give her to Esau in lawful wedlock, and now she will fall a victim to the ravisher's illicit passion. When Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter, he sent twelve servants to fetch Dina from Shechem's house. But Shechem went out to them with his men, and drove them from his house, and he would not suffer them to come unto Dina, and he kissed and embraced her before their eyes. Jacob then sent two maidens of his servants' daughters to remain with Dina in the house of Shechem. Shechem bade three of his friends to go to his father Hamor, the son of Hadekam, the son of Pered, and say, Get me this damsel to wife. Hamor tried at first to persuade his son not to take a Hebrew woman to wife, but when Shechem persisted in his request, he did according to the word of his son, and went forth to communicate with Jacob concerning the matter. In the meanwhile the sons of Jacob returned from the field, and kindled with wrath they spoke unto their father, saying, Surely death is due to this man and his household, because the Lord God of the whole earth commanded Noah and his children that man shall never rob nor commit adultery. Now behold, Shechem has ravaged and committed fornication with our sister, and not one of all the people of the city spake a word to him. And while they were speaking, Hamor came to speak to Jacob the words of his son concerning Dina, and after he ceased to speak, Shechem himself came to Jacob and repeated the request made by his father. Simon and Levi answered Hamor and Shechem deceitfully, saying, All you have spoken unto us we will do. And behold, our sister is in your house, but keep away from her until we send to our father Isaac concerning this matter, for we can do nothing without his counsel. He knows the ways of our father Abraham, and whatever he saith unto us we will tell you, we will conceal nothing from you. Shechem and his father went home thereafter, satisfied with the results achieved, and when they had gone, the sons of Jacob asked him to seek counsel and pretext in order to kill the inhabitants of the city who had deserved this punishment on account of their wickedness. Then Simon said to them, I have good counsel to give to you. Bid them be circumcised. If they consent not, we shall take our daughter from them and go away. And if they consent to do this, then when they are in pain, we shall attack them and slay them. The next morning Shechem and his father came again to Jacob to speak concerning Dina. And the sons of Jacob spoke deceitfully to them, saying, we told our father Isaac all your words, and your words pleased him. But he said, That thus did Abraham his father command him from God, that any man is not of his descendants, who desireth to take one of his daughters to wife, shall cause every male belonging to him to be circumcised. Shechem and his father hastened to do the wishes of the sons of Jacob, and they persuaded also the men of the city to do likewise, for they were greatly esteemed by them, being the princes of the land. On the next day Shechem and his father rose up early in the morning, and they assembled all the men of the city, and they called for the sons of Jacob, and they circumcised Shechem, his father, his five brothers, and all the males in the city, six hundred and forty-five men, and two hundred and seventy-six lads. 
Hadakam, the grandfather of Shechem, and his six brothers would not be circumcised, and they were greatly incensed against the people of the city for submitting to the wishes of the sons of Jacob. In the evening of the second day, Shechem and his father sent to have eight little children, whom their mothers had concealed, brought to them to be circumcised. Hadakam and his six brothers sprang at the messengers, and sought to slay them, and sought to slay also Shechem, Hamor, and Dina. They chitted Shechem and his father for doing a thing that their fathers had never done, which would raise the ire of the inhabitants of the land of Canaan against them, as well as the ire of all the children of Ham, and that on account of a Hebrew woman. Hadakam and his brothers finished by saying, Behold, tomorrow we will go and assemble our Canaanitish brethren, and we will come and smite you in all in whom you trust, that there shall not be a remnant left of you or them. When Hamor and his son Shechem and all the people of the city heard this, they were sore afraid, and they repented what they had done. And Shechem and his father answered Hadakim and his brothers, Because we saw that the Hebrews would not accede to our wishes concerning their daughter, we did this thing. But when we shall have obtained our request from them, we will do unto them that which is in your hearts and ours, as soon as we shall become strong. Dina, who heard their words, hastened and dispatched one of her maidens, whom her father had sent to take care of her in Shechem's house, and informed Jacob and his sons of the conspiracy plotted against them. When the sons of Jacob heard this, they were filled with wrath, and Simon and Levi swore, and said, As the Lord liveth, by tomorrow there shall not be a remnant left in the whole city. They began the extermination by killing eighteen of the twenty young men who had concealed themselves and were not circumcised, and two of them fled and escaped some lime pits that were in the city. Then Simon and Levi slew all the city, not leaving a male over, and while they were looking for spoils outside of the city, three hundred women rose against them and threw stones and dust upon them, but Simon single-handedly slew them all and returned to the city where he joined Levi. Then they took away from the people outside of the city their sheep, their oxen, their cattle, and also the women and the little children, and they led all these away, and took them to the city to their father Jacob. The number of women whom they did not slay, but only took captive, was eighty-five virgins, among them a young damsel of great beauty by the name of Bunah, whom Simon took to wife. The number of the males which they took captive and did not slay was forty-seven, and all these men and women were servants to the sons of Jacob, and to their children after them, until the day they left Egypt. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg. A War Frustrated When Simon and Levi had gone from the city, the two young men who had concealed themselves in the lime pits and were not slain amongst the people of the city, rose up, and they found the city desolate, without a man only weeping women, and they cried out, saying, Behold, this is the evil which the sons of Jacob did, who destroyed one of the Canaanite cities, and were not afraid of all the land of Canaan. They left the city and went to Tapua, and told the inhabitants all that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem. Jashub, the king of Tapua, sent to Shechem to see whether these young men had told the truth, for he did not believe them, saying, How could two men destroy a large city like Shechem? The messengers of Jashub returned, and they reported, The city is destroyed, not a man is left there, only weeping women, neither are there flocks and cattle there, for all that was in the city was taken away by the sons of Jacob. Jashub wondered thereat, for the like had not been heard from the days of Nimrod, and not even from the remotest times, that two men should be able to destroy so large a city, and he decided to go to war against the Hebrews and avenge the cause of the people of Shechem. His counselors said to him, If two of them laid waste a whole city, surely if thou goest against them, they all will rise up against us and destroy us. Therefore send to the kings round about, that we all together fight against the sons of Jacob and prevail against them. The seven kings of the Amorites, when they heard the evil that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem, assembled together with all their armies, ten thousand men, with drawn swords, and they came to fight against the sons of Jacob. And Jacob was greatly afraid, and he said to Simon and Levi, Why have you brought such an evil upon me? I was at rest, and you provoked the inhabitants of the land against me by your acts. Then Judah spoke to his father, Was it for naught that Simon and Levi killed the inhabitants of Shechem? 
Verily, it was because Shechem dishonored our sister, and transgressed the command of our God to Noah and his children, and not one of the inhabitants of the city interfered in the matter. Now why art thou afraid, and why art thou displeased at my brethren? Surely our God, who delivered the city of Shechem and its people into their hand, he will also deliver into our hands all the Canaanitish kings who are coming against us. Now cast away thy fears, and pray to God to assist and deliver us. Judah then addressed his brethren, saying, The Lord our God is with us. Fear not, then. Stand ye forth, each man girt with his weapons of war, his bow and his sword, and we will go and fight against the uncircumcised. The Lord is our God, he will save us. Jacob, his eleven sons, and one hundred servants belonging to Isaac, who had come to their assistance, marched forward to meet the Amorites, a people exceedingly numerous, like unto the sand upon the seashore. The sons of Jacob sent unto their grandfather Isaac at Hebron, requesting him to pray unto the Lord to protect them from the hand of the Canaanites. And he prayed as follows, O Lord God, thou didst promise my father, saying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and also me thou didst promise that thou would establish thy word to my father. Now, O Lord, God of the whole world, pervert, I pray thee, the counsel of these kings, that they may not fight against my sons, and impress the hearts of their kings and their people with the terror of my sons, and bring down their pride, that they turn away from my sons. Deliver my sons and their servants from them with thy strong hand and outstretched arm, for power and might are in thy hands to do all this. Jacob also prayed unto God, and said, O Lord God, powerful and exalted God, who hast reigned from days of old, from then until now and forever, Thou art he who stirreth up wars, and causest them to cease. In thy hand are power and might, to exalt and to bring low. O oh, may my prayer be acceptable unto thee, that thou mayest turn to me with thy mercies, to impress the hearts of these kings and their people with the terror of my sons, and terrify them in their camps, and with thy great kindness deliver all those that trust in thee. For thou art he who subdues the people under us, and the nations under our feet." God heard the prayers of Isaac and Jacob, and he filled the hearts of all the advisers of the Canaanite kings with great fear and terror. And when the kings, who were undecided whether to undertake a campaign against the sons of Jacob, consulted them, they said, Are you silly, or is there no understanding in you that you propose to fight with the Hebrews? Why do you take delight in your own destruction this day? Behold, two of them came to the city of Shechem without fear or terror, and they put all the inhabitants of the city to the sword. No man stood up against them, and how will you be able to fight with them? The royal counselors then proceeded to enumerate all the mighty things God had done for Abraham, Jacob, and the sons of Jacob, such as had not been done from the days of old by any of the gods of the nations. When the kings heard all the words of their advisers, they were afraid of the sons of Jacob, and they would not fight against them. They turned back with their armies on that day, each to his own city. But the sons of Jacob kept their station that day till evening, and seeing that the kings did not advance to do battle with them in order to avenge the inhabitants of Shechem, whom they had killed, they returned home. The wrath of the Lord descended upon the inhabitants of Shechem to the uttermost on account of their wickedness. For they had sought to do unto Sarah and Rebekah as they did unto Dinah, but the Lord had prevented them. Also they had persecuted Abraham when he was a stranger, and they had vexed his flocks when they were big with young. And Eblon, one born in his house, they had handled most shamefully. And thus they did to all strangers, taking away their wives by force. End of chapter 6, part 12